So Lucky Baldwin, his wife, one of his wives, is in a picture at the um, Monrovia Lawn Tennis, tennis Club. Right. Did did he come and participate in Monrovia after he sold the land? Was he how was he involved over time other than banking? Sandy, the, the banking is the only association I'm aware of. I don't, you know, he didn't obviously did not go to church here. He may Why have, obviously? Well, <laughs> he didn't go to church anywhere. He was a church going man. I see. You know, whether he came to the clubhouse at the Grandview or not, I don't know. He had the Oakwood Hotel, so if he was going to go to you know, a drinking establishment and engage in you know, a little game of poker or whatever, he would, probably would have gone there rather than going to Monrovia. So he didn't socialize with William Monroe or any of the... I don't know. ...leading lights in. I really don't know. Interesting. I've never... Yeah. yeah. If they were... If they were concerned about maintaining public appearance, they probably would not have wanted to socialize with Baldwin. You know, I think I mentioned the subtotal, or subtitle of C.B. Glasscock's book was The Story of an Unconventional Success, with heavy emphasis on unconventional. And he was married multiple times? Four or five times, yeah. And one of them was 16, is that correct? Lily Bennett, I think, was 16. And that was one of his later wives. It wasn't when he was younger. Yeah, his first first wife was Sarah Ann Unruh, and her brother was Baldwin's business manager, or either brother or cousin. Anyway, a family relation. Years later, and I don't know who the second was. It was Jenny Dexter, Lily Bennett. Then there was another one in there that he only acknowledged, I think, in his will. And he had a child by one of these women. His... His child from the, his surviving child from his first marriage was Clara Baldwin, Clara Baldwin Stocker. And his surviving wife, uh, pardon me, his surviving daughter from, I think, Jenny Dexter was Anita Baldwin. I think he, I don't think he and Lily had any children. She would not grant him a divorce. And Glasscock or someone said, she was always ready to receive him socially in San Francisco, but she never granted, was willing to grant a divorce, agree to a divorce. So Santa Anita, is that the name of that related to the name of his daughter? She was named after the rancho. And is Enochia related to her? And she tell chose us about that. the name. It was a, a composite of Anita and Oaks. So she chose that name for her house. And where was that, and what was it like? Well, I wish I had at the top of my head the architect, but it was a large, I would say prairie-style inspired house, northwest corner of Foothill and Baldwin, large, large acreage, corner gatehouse. I had a separate gymnasium in the form of a Greek temple. Then the main house had a central section with flanking wings. There was a kind of a rumpus room, or anyway, there was a bowling alley in the basement. I'd call it maybe a game room, and there were murals in that were painted by Maynard Dixon, a famous early California artist. Those were salvaged when the house was demolished, before the house was demolished, and I, they went someplace, or they would be appreciated and curated properly. What else? I got to see the house twice when it was still owned by the McCaslin family, and then it was sold. And the new owners had a plan to uh, develop it with multiple residences, and so it was torn down. And so tell us about Clara. Let's see, I think her grandson described her as somewhat showy in, in character and somewhat flashy in dress, something like that. She was obviously an extrovert and entrepreneurial in the sense that she provided the uh, setting for certain ladies of the night to conduct their business. I think it was Julian Fisher who described her. she had a tavern, a roadhouse would be a better, suggestion, a better description. And then Julian Fisher said, 
and out and back where the cribs where the ladies did their business, something like that. So she wasn't above some, uh, shall we say, socially perhaps unacceptable business enterprises. Where was this place? I think it was at first in Santa Clara. In Arcadia? In Arcadia, I'm not sure. Yeah. Arcadia, now the community of homes, was once described as the wide open booze and gambling den of iniquity. Back in the days when the Baldwins basically operated it. Well, tell us about the cottage on the on the Baldwin Ranch. Yeah, it was, Queen Anne Cottage. Okay, it was desi designed by I believe it was designed by Lily Bennett's father, who was also an architect and active in Northern California. He might have designed the California State Capitol building. I'd have to check my resources to be sure. But it was designed as a guest house. Baldwin himself never lived there. He lived in the old Hugo Reed adobe that he had augmented by the addition construction of a wooden wing or wooden L-shaped wing. It was primarily for guests at Green Ant Cottage. And the irony is that there's a beautiful stained glass window in the front door to the cottage, not of Lily Bennett, but of Jenny Dexter, his child bride who died too soon. The cottage was, let's see, 18, I want to say 1881. And after Baldwin's death, Anita, sought to conserve the, the furnishings, so I think the stained glass windows were removed and replaced with plain glass sashes. I believe the stained glass was stored, store, stored in the cottage barn, or the carriage barn. I think she might have had the fireplace tiles removed. Anyway, she did some, some conservation that allowed those items to be kept untouched while the cottage itself sat vacant. One, one story about it. They opened the cottage in 1953 when Arcadia was celebrating its 50th anniversary, 50th anniversary of its incorporation. And they allowed people to go through the cottage and docents were there. Immediately ahead of us in line was an older woman, a friend, and she laughingly told the docent in the bathroom, she said, I can't tell you the year now, but when the, after Baldwin had died and the cottage was vacant, she and a friend or friends climbed over the fence and got into the cottage. And she said, I'm embarrassed to admit, we took a nail and we scratched our names on the back of the bathroom door. And the docent took the bathroom door and opened it up so you could see the backside, and there they were.